Hi there, this is Will Brubaker from willthewebmechanic.com, and I'm here to give you a brief overview of how to create and publish awesome surveys to your WordPress website with the Awesome Surveys WordPress plugin. After you've installed and activated the plugin, you will have a new item in your WordPress menu with the label WTWM Plugins. That's Will the Web Mechanic. The link to the Awesome Surveys configuration can be found as a submenu item of WTWM Plugins, and if you click on that link, you will be taken to the Survey Form Builder. You should see something similar to what you're seeing in this video. Before I show you how to build a survey, I'd just like to point out that there is a contextual help tab included with this plugin, so that if you get stuck on something, you can reference the help items and hopefully that will provide you with a hint. The contextual help is accessed by clicking the help tab in the upper right corner of your browser window. And as you can see, it has a few items for the various fields that we'll be going over next. So with that in mind, I'm going to show you what all the fields are and demonstrate how to build a survey. The first thing you will need to do is to give your survey a name. The name that you give your survey will be displayed when you publish your survey, so keep that in mind. Survey names must be unique and should be briefly descriptive of the type of information that you are going to be gathering from your users. Once you've entered a unique name for your survey, click the Start Building button. When the Survey Builder is first presented to you, there is an accordion section that is fully expanded and has a couple of things that you need to give some consideration to. The first is a thank you message. The message will be displayed to users who complete the survey. There must be a thank you message set for your survey. Next are the validation slash authentication options. This section provides you with some options to prevent or at least reduce users from completing the survey multiple times. If it is important to you to prevent people from taking the survey multiple times, then the best option here is to require the user be logged in. For this to work properly, however, you must allow registrations on your site. That is, users must be able to register and log in. The next option is cookie-based. If this option is selected, a cookie will be set in the user's browser when that user completes the survey. This method is far from bulletproof as it is easily circumvented, but should prevent most of your users from completing the survey multiple times. The next, default option, is none. This completely bypasses any type of checking and anyone who visits the page or post where the survey is published can take it multiple times. So with those two options completed, the next thing to do is to add a question to your survey. Near the top, there is a drop-down selector labeled Select Field Type. There are several different types of fields you can add to your survey, and if you need to be reminded of what these field types are, you can reference the contextual help that we talked about earlier. See the field type to see some examples. Each field or question that you add to your survey will be represented by one of these field types. Data collection strategies are outside the scope of this video, but you should try to avoid the text, email, number, and text area fields as much as possible. Those fields are handy for collecting certain types of data, but to get meaningful responses to questions, you should consider one of the other field types. So with that in mind, here is how to add questions to your survey. First, from the field type selector, select a type of field. I'm going to select text, and by doing so, I'm presented with a couple of fields. The first input is the question you are asking. This doesn't necessarily need to be a question, but it should act as some sort of prompt and briefly explain what type of input you are asking the user for. In this example, I'll use this field to collect the user's name. In the next section, there are some validation options. If you would like to require an answer to this question, check the box labeled required. You can limit the input to a certain number of characters by filling out the maximum length field as well. Once you have made your choices, you can click Add Question and the preview will begin to be populated with your survey questions. Hopefully this is making a bit more sense now, but let me show you a few more of the fields that are available and how to use them. The next available field is Email. Visually, it isn't much different from a text input field, but this plugin will automatically validate inputs based on their type. So an email field will only accept validly formatted email addresses. The next type of field available is number. This field has a couple extra validation fields where you can set a minimum number and a maximum number if this is needed. The next thing I'm going to show you is the drop-down selector field type. This field, along with checkbox and radio, will allow you to predefine some answers as well as set a default answer if you need to. With drop-down selected, you will see a slider that allows you to set the number of answers available to this question. You must set at least one answer. 
move the slider to the number of answers that you wish to present to the user and define the answers. You can set one of these answers to the default if you would like and it will be pre-selected in the survey form. The process for adding radio and checkbox fields to your survey is similar to adding a dropdown. The main difference is in how these behave when the form is published. Radio fields allow only one selection and checkboxes allow for multiple selections. The final field type is text area. This is similar to the text field earlier, but more practical if you want to allow a greater number of characters. The advanced validation option of maximum length is available here so that you can limit the input to some number of characters, much the same as with the text field. Once you have all of your survey questions and answers built, you're ready to save it. Simply press the Save Survey button and you'll be ready to publish. Once the survey is saved, it will appear under the Your Survey Results tab. You will find the shortcode to publish your survey in that tab. This is also where the results of your survey will be presented. Field types that have predefined answers, that is drop-down checkbox and radio, will show the number of times those answers have been selected and a percentage. Other field types will display individual responses in an accordion view. To publish your survey, simply copy the shortcode and insert it into a poster page, save that poster page, and your survey will be instantly live. So here is just a quick demonstration of how some of the f automatic form validation works. If you'll remember, the character limit that was set for this first text field was 25. If we exceed 25 characters, it should throw an error. For the email field, it will be validated as an email address. So if the format is not a, an email address, it will throw an error. And for this number field, we did set a maximum value allowed here. If we exceed that maximum value, again, we'll get an error message. On the dropdown, we selected a mic as the default value, and you can see that it is pre-selected here. The radio and the checkboxes, we did require those fields, but I'm not going to select them now just to show the validation there when we try and submit the form. And we'll get an error saying that these fields are required, so a selection needs to be made. And now our form is valid and it can be submitted. And once it's been submitted, you can see that the thank you message is displayed where the form was. Now, to see the results of our survey, we can go back to the admin interface and under your survey results and make sure and do a page refresh. And under the name field, the email field the number field. And here are a 
our options that had predefined answers. And you'll see how all of that works. So that pretty much wraps up how to use this plugin. If you're stuck, you need some help, make sure and visit the support forum for this plugin in the WordPress plugin repository.